They say it's all fun and games until someone gets left hanging and Giannis successfully pulled off the oldest trick in the book against Jalen Brown on Sunday, but it was the finals MVP who ultimately got the last laugh and the win, handing the Bucks their eighth loss of the season. Here's what he had to say about the win and Giannis's games after the game. Giannis is a child, you know. I'm just focused on helping my team get a win, and that's what we did tonight. Ashley Nicole Moss here, and I am joined by Rip Hamilton. Rip, listen, when you're down and, and you're losing, and you're doing all sorts of things, and the Bucks right now are 2-8, and eight, they're not looking so hot. Chris Middleton is still not back. He had two surgeries on his ankles. The Bucks are struggling every which way from Sunday. Is this how you want your superstar behaving? I know we like Giannis and his childish games, but you got to dial it back a little bit. You know this from watching Giannis over the years. This is not Giannis at all. I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy that doesn't take any plays off in the all-star game. He, he's not a guy that fools around at all. That just tells you uh, where his mind is and where the team mindset is something going on in the locker room. Yes, it's been a rough start for the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, when you look at uh, the leadership, what, what type of leadership they have in the locker room right now, it's definitely questioned. But when you see him doing things like this out on the floor and not really taking the game serious, but taking the game serious, this is just uncharacteristic of who Giannis is as a basketball player, as a former MVP, and a champion. So I think this is a situation where you just ask the question, like, what is really good that's going on in the locker room? Because it just seems like the Bucks are just in a place that we're not used to seeing them be at. I mean, let's talk about the locker room, right? At some point, we have to have the real conversation about Doc Rivers, and I feel like the conversation's been circulating for a while. If you look at the Bucks, they are 20 and 28 with Doc Rivers as their head coach. That is a losing record. Doc Rivers has been given a lot of chances, and I don't think he's the sole problem in Milwaukee. Let's make this very, very clear. But let's also make it very clear that Doc Rivers has proven to us time and time again that he is not the coach that can take you to the promised land. And I'm going to go on record and say this flat out. I'm looking at the camera. Doc Rivers should not get another head coaching job after his stint in Milwaukee. He is not the guy. He is a regular season coach. I don't care what he did with the super team in Boston, the Celtics. I could have coached that team and had them win a championship. They were just that good. Doc Rivers is not the coach you think he is. We've been shown this in multiple different ways with a multiple different teams, multiple different years. Enough is enough. Milwaukee, Giannis, save yourself. It's not too late to change course. We can go ahead and save the season. It's still very early, but they got to figure it out, and they got to figure it out quickly. The play-in tournament obviously starts tonight, and you have the Bucks facing the Raptors. You saw the standings. The two worst teams in the NBA. It's going to be the battle of, I guess, the mid. I don't know how we're going to word that, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to switch gears, though. We're going to go from the worst to the very best. And the Cleveland Cavaliers, I mean, it is all systems a go in Cleveland. First and foremost, before we dive into just the history of what this means as a franchise, are you buying Cleveland stock? Well, Ash, this, this team is balling right now. And I got a, a chance to uh, spend some time with Get Dan Gilbert uh, this summer. And I told him that he's going to really like Kenny Atkinson, man, because he's a guy that can develop young talent. He's a gym rat. He's always in the gym trying to f figure out different ways to get better, especially uh, when you're talking about a lead that when guys come in, they don't always be a student and always willing to pull in the work. Uh, he just switched up the offense for them. If you look at their offensive set, they're getting into offensive set a lot more quicker. They're playing a faster, more up-tempo game. And the thing that I love best about him is what he's doing with Evan Mobley. Mm. He's putting him into that point forward situation, very similar to what the Golden State Warriors did with Draymond Green. And what that does is it takes Donovan Mitchell off the ball. It takes the guys that have been running ISO, a lot of ISO plays last year and now putting them in situations where they're off the ball and you got a willing passer in Evan Mobley. So I think that Evan Mobley is the X factor because in my opinion, he's probably the best player on that team. And when you use him as the best player on the team, good things can happen for your ball club. 
I'm glad you brought up Kenny Atkinson because I think that that is a really important conversation when you talk about this Cleveland Cavaliers team. If you look at their last nine results, yes, it has been against teams that aren't necessarily the most impressive right now in the association. There are some, you know, playoff contender teams. You know, you talk about the Knicks. The Lakers can always squeeze in there. You have the Orlando Magic. The Bucks are not the Bucks that we're used to seeing. The Warriors. But I think the most impressive thing is the Cavs fire J.B. Bickerstaff after getting to the semifinals for the first time in six years, six seasons rather. This is a lot like that Mark Jackson, Steve Kerr situation where Steve Kerr got them to the playoffs, the Warriors that is, in 2013 and 2014, but they still made the change. When you talk about Kenny Atkinson, you talk about a coach who coached Kevin Durant and coached Kyrie Irving in Brooklyn. It didn't go ahead and produce the results that Brooklyn was looking for or at least quick enough, and he ultimately got fired and had to figure it out. I wonder, Rip, when you think about this team, this Cleveland Cavaliers team, that is, do you think part of the reason they have been so successful is because they're giving Kenny Atkinson the freedom to learn as he goes, and there's not so much pressure on him to produce results right out the gate? Absolutely. They gave him the keys to allow him to do what he does best, and that's you know, develop young talent and also allow him to implement his system. And also, which is a big key, is Donovan Mitchell. I mean, you heard about the all the bickering he had with Bickerstaff last season, but also he got his check. He got his money. And a lot of times <laughs> when you're playing in that free agent year, sometimes you press it a little bit too much out on the floor. You might take more isolation uh, situations on the floor because, hey, you want to get the bag with these kids to say uh, in today's day. But when you already are paid, now you're coming out understanding that, hey, now I might have to make the extra, extra pass. Now I know instead of going out taking 30 shots a game, maybe I only need to shoot 20 to 25 shots. Maybe I need to get Allen a couple of rim runners out there. So now if you watch their style of play, everybody's touching the ball. Everybody's feeling uh, like they're a part of the offense. So I think that's a big testament to Kenny Atkins and, and, and the style of offense that he's brought to this team. Listen, five of the last seven teams who have started 12-0 went on to reach the NBA Finals, so history is definitely on Cleveland's side. Listen, the NBA Cup is back. I was not a buyer in the stock when it first happened, but I'm going to the side of I love this thing. <laughs> $500,000 is on the line, a trip to Vegas. The Lakers have a chance to defend their title. Rip, who is your pick to win the whole shebang? Ashley, I was with you. I said I hated <laughs> it. I didn't like it. Nobody will play like, like. You know what, what? What? Why? Why would guys get up for this? And uh, last year, with the Los Angeles Lakers winning it, and you know LeBron James getting the MVP, now every young kid in the NBA wants to go out there and do what the King has done, and that's win the cup. So if I had to pick a team uh, that that that, in my opinion, will win it, I'm going with OKC. I just love this group, man. I mean, Shea Gilchrist Alexander uh, is one of the best in the business. I think this team right now is playing at a high level. I know Czech just went out with, a, with an injury, but when they came out last night against the, uh, the uh, Clippers and went small ball and still was up by as many as 20 points in that game, uh, I just feel as though this team, especially young, uh, young in the season, that they're going to come out and be prepared and take every game like it's last and probably win it. I'm not mad at the Thunder at all, and I'm not mad that I get to do this segment with you. Rip Hamilton, thank you so much. Group play begins tonight for the NBA. We have my Knicks taking on the Go 76ers. Magic, baby. Go Magic, baby. Joel Embiid is back. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to help them. You have Luka, who's kind of injured, and the return of Clay Thompson to the Chase Center. You don't want to miss it, and you don't want to miss what we have coming up on this show. Jacqueline? All right, thanks, Ash. Over in College Hoops, a marquee doubleheader. Uh, Coach Royalty in the house in Atlanta for the Champions Classic. We're going to preview with Matt Norlander coming up.